Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to Fabulous Friday when you don't know what you might get. Um, today's video is probably going to end up being broken up into a couple of different pieces. Um, and if I can't get them all uploaded for Friday, uh, one of them may carry over to Monday, but we'll talk about all that in a minute. What I first want to do is say a special thank you to Lisa. Uh, Lisa was the winner of my postcard, jelly postcard play folio, I guess I'll call it. Um, she won all of those postcards. Congratulations, Lisa. But she was so sweet and she sent me a thank you card, which was wonderful. We don't have enough politeness in the in the world anymore. And it was wonderful, Lisa, to get your card. But then she added to it by sending me all these little goodies. I thought that was so sweet. This is so wonderful. And tell me, Excuse me, some of these are going to end up in the current journal that I have. Of course, I kept the stamps because, you know, you don't throw away stamps. But there are all these little goodies in here that are just wonderful. And I'm going to be taking several of them out of here and using them in this next journal. So thank you, Lisa, for your thank you. That was very, very sweet and unexpected, and I appreciate it very much. All right, let's talk about this journal. So I've gone ahead, uh, if you watched my video on Monday, you saw me getting things organized and getting put things put together. Um, and I have the signature now done, done, as in the papers are chosen. That's as far as I've gotten. But I'm doing this from this particular kit, in case you didn't see it. Uh, it's the travelogue kit from Craftsmith. I picked it up at Michael's for $3. Um, it was on sale. How could I resist? You know, just the way it is. And I have put together the signature now. And the problem is this and this and this. You have all of these white spaces. This is one of the problems in working with a lot, uh, especially the 12 by 12s, but a lot of, of scrapbook paper or cardstock comes one side only on the printed. So what do you do with all the white spaces? Well, I have solutions. I'm taking my jacket off. It's a chilly day here in the Finger Lakes. It's giving us a taste of what autumn is going to bring us. So I'm a little bit chilly. So the first... I have a whole list here of things that we can do, and I don't know how to do title screens. Um, and this is where I said it, this might get a little long. I have nine different things on this list um, with a couple of subheadings. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to fit this all into one video. In fact, what I'm going to do is put a timer on myself for 30 minutes. Yep, it's going. Um, and we'll see. Let's see what we can do in 30 minutes. So the first thing you can do, I've pulled out my washi because I'm going to start with that. And the first thing I'm going to do is use my washi as edging. Now I have a piece of grid paper here and I have grid washi. I don't know where I picked these up. I think Michael's. And I think I'm going to go with the medium color. Do I want the medium? I'm looking to see what goes well with this. Do I want the medium or do I want the dark? I think I want the medium. All right, so let's start with this washi which means now I have to move all my notes out of the way so I can get to my washi scrap and my glue page here. All right, so let's do the washi. And that's the first way you can, I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it here. and cut my washi. I'm sorry I'm off camera to cut, but I'm just using scissors to cut washi. It's not, uh, not exactly exciting. Yeah, fall is, is definitely showing that it is on its way here. I, I know some of you can't wait for the pumpkin spice and you like all the apples and my husband loves the colder weather. Not me. I am so much a summer person. I love the summer, so I am going to, I, it gets days like this and I'm like, okay, I am wearing sweatpants and I'm wearing a jacket and he's out there in shorts and a t-shirt. 
He's actually at the cabin today because he was enjoying the weather so much. He said, I want to go out and spend it in nature. I said, you go right ahead. I'm going to stay home and make a video. So there. Now I just put my, just so you can see, I am putting my scraps on here. This is just a way of, of saving them up and using some, doing something with them. Washi are often so pretty and I don't want to lose those little pieces. So I just stick them on here somewhere and eventually this will become its own little doodad. All right, so one way of doing that is this. And you know what? That's too plain. That's too plain. It's very pretty, but it's too plain. So I'm going to add, okay, this is going to be a little bit more difficult because I'm going to add a pattern to a pattern and I want to make sure that I don't get them. I want to, make, I want to line them up. Okay, cut that. If you are, if you haven't used washi a lot before, you may be saying, "Why are you putting glue on them?" Um, that's because washi is designed to be removable, and I don't want it to remove. I want it to stay put. Once I get it down there, I want it to stay put. Okay, I'm going to go over this, but I want to line up my squares. So that I'm not, come on, just a little bit more. There we go. There. So my squares, because I, I know that uh, it would drive my, I used to teach. And if things weren't lined up for some students, oh my glory, you, I lost them for the class. Things they had to have, you know, if, if. I had stuff on the board and it wasn't kind of even, it would drive them nuts. There. So I am being good about making sure my lines here match up. Now I'd like it a lot better. It leaves me space, lots of space to write in, but it gives it a little bit of a finish on the edge. Okay, let's find another white space. Different white space, different kind of white space. Um, not here. Not oops, that page is upside down. That's not gonna do anybody any good. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that that way. See, this is why we check these things. I don't sew things in for quite a while because I can goof things up royally. No, well, I think don't want this. I think I'll go with this page. All right, because I don't want my pages too quick, too close. This one and uh, this one I'm going to take out as well. I tend to do that. I take them out to work on them. Um, and this, the other thing, <laughs> you're probably reading my notes. Um, section it off. Sometimes it's nice to have sections. I'm going to cut this one. Okay, this one actually has a way of cutting it, but I don't like the cutter here so well it doesn't okay let go now let go of me don't make a liar of me and say oh look like you're permanent okay this is going to have actually quite a bit left over i'm coming about i don't want it to go all the way up i want it to come about halfway down i'm going to try to make it as level as possible here so this time i am sort of kind of going to measure it So that it's all level. So I'm going to section it in half. I end up wasting a lot of washi this way. This is the only problem I don't, again, one of the reasons I don't like this particular uh, container. Because I end up losing a lot of washi. Oh, let's just stick it down there. Okay. So let's go a little bit smaller this time. Pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, and now we're going to section it again. We're going to make a couple of sections on here because um, not everybody wants to write on the whole page or sometimes you're looking at it going, I don't have enough to cover that whole page. I just have a little bit that I want to write. Sorry, I have a cat hair. Uh, so you don't, you, sometimes you just want a small section to write on. 
Did I get that anywhere near level? Mm, go away, cat hair. Okay, I think it's close enough. And then one more fairly long piece up at the top. So with just this, I'm using, if you noticed, a thin washi for this um, because I don't want to take up too much writing space. I just want to take up some. Okay, now this one I can use my guideline here. Oops, I missed, I, it slid over here. Okay, by guidelines, I'm talking about these little dots. If I use those little dots, come on, I'm trying to clip it without clipping the entire piece. Let's put you right along the top. We'll make you an edge piece. All right, and so when we put it back into the journal, that's what we have. This page is moving around on me. So there we go. So we open it up and now we have a section spot. So we've taken that white space. We've brought it down into something smaller. This one's a little bit narrow, but you know, people like to write sometimes sideways. No reason you have to or draw or sketch, but you know, you want to leave some white space for them to play with for the, for whoever purchases this to play with, but that's one way of doing it. So that's washi. I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to check that off as edging and as a section. Okay, let's get out some inks. I'm going to pause you while I get out some inks. Okay, part two. So this is now the second thing that you can do to cover up some of these white spaces. We used washi. So now we have bigger white spaces. Um, and so I bought this pack of stencils. I don't remember how many there are, maybe 25 stencils in there, all different designs. It came from Amazon. I think it came used This because this was already kind of broken up there and it looks like there's some ink on some of these. So it did not say that it was used, supposed to be used, but it was used. So just be aware when you're getting things on Amazon. Not that I care because the stencils themselves are fine. They're exactly what I was looking for. So I'm okay with that. So I picked a couple different designs. I don't like that one. I was thinking that I wanted something that looked like roads or a map or something. I think this one for sure. I don't know about this one. So let's go ahead with this one. So one of the things that you can do when you are um, trying to cover up that white space, I got out four different of the my inks. I've got a Distress Oxide Scorched Timber, Distress Oxide Tea Dyed, and then I have two inks. I have Walnut Stain Ink and Archival Ink uh, in Vintage Photo. So I've, I picked all browns because that's kind of where I'm going with these. And um, so let's talk about one of the, actually we're talking about stencils, so let's stick with stencils for the moment. We've got, we have several things that we can do. Now you can see that I already did on something on this side, which was fine. So let's pull this out again. I'm trying to keep my order here. We'll move that up out of the way. And I'm bringing down, oh, apparently scorched timber wants to be used. Um, I always check my swatch sheet to make sure before I put that in there, scorched timber is that color. Yeah, I can go with scorched timber on that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of, do I want to do a border again or do I want to just do, I think I just want to do a little bit up here in the corner. So I'm going to take this, I'm just going to kind of dot it a little bit just to get a little bit of it off. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to do some of this in the corner. And I went over a little bit because, yeah. Okay, and I'm going to do a little bit down here. Do the same thing down here. Now this is darker because I didn't, you know, pat it off first. One of the ways to keep it from going over there, first of all, is to be careful. And second of all, I could have taped it. 
Okay, let me put that back like that for a minute. And then I want to put it back in next to this to see if I like it like that or do I want more. I think I want to take this page and just set that over there and just do one down here in the corner. And not as much or as dark. So I'm just going to see if I can do with what's left on the sponge. There we go. So I've covered up my white space with a stencil. Let me put it back in the book. There we go. I like that. Okay. Um, now, will I add more decoration in? Maybe. So we're not, we may or may not be done with these pages. And that's the same thing with the washi pages. We may or may not be done with that page, but it gives me a base. It gives me something to kind of work with and to continue on with. I don't want anything there. Do I there any place else? Okay. Let me, while I'm here, let me deal with this one. So this is that ripped page. If you saw me gathering things together, you saw me gather this ripped page. And I've decided to do this as a pocket in the middle. I had intended to do a fold-up pocket, but I went a little bit crazy with my uh, trimmer. And by, before you knew it, I had trimmed everything up. Do I have ink somewhere on my hands? Because I see a little bit of ink smush. It's not going to matter because I'm going to cover it up with this. But I want to do something with this edge. I want to um, make it just a little bit darker. So I'm going to start with Walnut Stain. Because I want it to look as if it's been burned. I'm starting with Walnut Stain. And actually, let me come down here. I want to come pretty deep on my walnut stain. I'm going to go ahead and give it around the edge, but I also want it to come in a little bit. I want it to be a little messy. This is grungy. This particular one is a grungy piece. Grunge up the side a little bit. I didn't grunge up that side. Oops, got a little piece piece that had ripped off just sitting there waiting to be noticed okay I'm gonna come down and just put a little bit more down there okay now I'm gonna come in with my distress oxide uh, scorch timber which is a darker color and I'm gonna come around the edge with that so that it looks like this edge got just a little bit scorched. Literally scorched timber. That's my color. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. And then this particular one, these, I like these, but they don't always stand up. If these get just a little bit off, a little bit wonky, they fall over all the time. So, let me grab my centerpiece. I'm going to take my, this is a Fabri-Tac. And put glue on the two sides. And one in the middle. The one in the middle really is just to kind of hold it in place. Put it there and there. Fold it in half so that everything's in where it belongs. I'm a little bit wonky down here. Oh look, it wasn't completely dry and now I have a little bit over here. That's right. You know what's going to happen here? This is going to end up being covered up. Now, I, I don't necessarily want that white showing on the side of this one. So we're just going to cover it up a little bit with the scorched timber. Oh, 
where it shows. I'll get a little more on there. And we'll go ahead and do the whole edge. There we go. Now, I did get a little bit off here, but you know what? That's what scissors are for. Let me cover everything up. We'll just trim that just ever so slightly, which means I may have to re-ink it. I'm going to do things in the right order. I don't like how that, that's still too white. So, yeah, as you're doing things, you just kind of play around with ink. So there's, there I now have my two center pages covered with something at least that so they're not too you know bright white staring at you um, put it back in the piece move that out of the way so there you go you can put pockets in and which is actually my next one I was going to do pockets next but I had the ink out and then it opened up to this so there so we've got this now when I put things in it, it won't hopefully you know and if that shows we'll figure it out we'll do something else with it later okay so going back to my so sensible design in a corner i did that now i want to smoosh a page i just have to figure out which page i want to smoosh um i don't think i want to do that one i think i want to smoosh a page back here maybe this page well, there's a lot of white there. Let's smoosh this page and then... Or do I want to smoosh that one? Let's smoosh this page. Okay, because I'm going to smoosh that page, I'm going to take... I'm definitely going to pull it right out of the, the piece. I do not want this in with that. And I have another page that I'm going to put down. Obviously, I've been smooshing before. I'm going to put this down so I can smoosh on it with hearts to my heart's content. Um, and I need to cover up that one side. And I had, oh, where's my, okay, be right back. Found it. Um, this is a thing, a roll of washi that I've actually have been using for a while for this sort of purpose. And, um, it has airplanes on it, so it's probably going to go into this particular washi, but I have two of them. I have two full rolls of this. I'll never use it all up. So I've been using this as my scrap washi, so to speak. So notice I've not put any glue on here, and I'm not really tapping it down very hard, because all I'm going to do is use this as masking. If you have masking tape or painter's tape, something that won't stick to the paper, you can also use that. And I want to use primarily... Um, well, hang on. Before I do that, I think I want to use Archival Ink. This is a vintage photo. Come on. Fill up. And I'm going to smoosh. This is, I don't know if it has another name, but I always call this my smooshing. And for this one, I'm going to just kind of come in. Notice I start off the page. Um, that prevents me from getting too many um, uh, dark spots right away at the beginning. I put the masking there so that I don't hit it too much. Um, and you can really smoosh in any way, shape, or form you want. But I'm just going to smoosh. Now I could leave it just like that. If I stuck it back in the Hang on, I lost my page. I could leave it just like that. I don't have to do anything more. But, you know, I'm playing, so I'm going to do more. I have my tea dye here. So we're going to tea dye it in a little bit in the middle here. I'm going to add a little tea dye and smoosh it together so that you're, oops, 
See this? These are a little bit harder to work with, these little things, than the, the bigger ones. Other Because I, I do tend to get some circles. Um, that's why I'm really careful about making sure I go pretty light to start with. Of course, then I didn't. I've seen people using the brushes with the handles. I like, I'd like. i like to try those. I haven't been able to find them. I've been able to find them uh, for... Um, I want their makeup brushes. Do you think I could find them as makeup brushes? No, I can only find the ones that people are selling for exorbitant rates of money as art brushes. And I'm like, you know, you know what? No, I just want the cheap ones. Because you know me... I'm cheap. Okay, that's a little darker than I wanted it there, but oh, there's my timer. I'm at 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to go just a little bit longer, finish this off, and then I'll probably stop the video and uh, we'll reconvene. Okay, I want to use a little bit of walnut stain. Walnut stain can be a little dark. See, it's a little dark, so I want to be real judicious in my use of it and not do too much of it but maybe just kind of go through and add it in in a couple of places here just to give it a little contrast okay and then we're going to go back to um, this is vintage photo I'll finish off with vintage photo in the middle again. If you're, I'm not obviously a very good smoosher, but if you're a good smoosher, you could make really cool art pieces out of this. I'm only an okay smoosher. Need a little more up in that corner. Corners don't have a lot. Okay, that tea dye kind of got everywhere, so I'm a little trying to bring some of that tea dye down a little bit. So it's not quite so in your face. Um, and I know some people keep, when they do this, they do their things on top of the of that and then it gets to the point where you can't hardly see it but I really no, I don't want to tour scorch timber that's way too dark um I really like to be able to see what I have so what I do is I just use a when they will stand up I use one of these uh just an index card and then when that index card gets full of ink it gets redone and reused as um something else as a journal card oh, she see that's way too dark you got too heavy a hand here Dupre trying to lighten it up a little bit blend it in a little more all right we're gonna call it done we may end up sticking a pocket over the top of it, which is another option. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, now I can't remember where this was. I think it was here. Yeah. Okay. Taking my tape very carefully off. I will leave that. Now, I could smoosh the whole thing, but I don't know that I want to. So, there. When you put it inside the journal, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I, like I said, I may put some, like, these are bases. These are not necessarily the finished product, but we have, I lost my pen. Uh, we have used washi as edging. We have used it to section off a piece, which I don't know where it went. It's in here somewhere. There it is. There's the sectioning. We've used ink to change the top of a page, we've used it as a stencil, and we've used it as a smoosh, wherever my smoosh just went. I love 
lost my smoosh. There it is. All right. We're going to stop there for this particular video. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. That was just my first two and a half. So yeah, we have a lot of these. We'll take a look at them and uh, I'll try to get more videos up today. Whatever I can't get up for today on Friday, will go up on Monday. All right, till later, this is Cindy signing off.